Hey guys, hanging out with the shop bot today. This tool is awesome. You can do everything from sign making, furniture design, 3D carving, and about anything else. Uh, follow along with this video as we go over a couple of the basics of setting up your vCarve file so you can master this tool. When you open up vCarve, you have two options. Either create a new file or open an existing. Since we don't already have a vCarve file started, we're going to create a new file. What that does, it gets us into our job setup screen, and you can see over here on the left side, we have all the options to set up our job uh, for whatever we're gonna try to cut through. First thing is job type. Are we cutting single-sided? Just cutting one side on our, our piece of material. For this, we're gonna do a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. Or are we gonna do double-sided? Am I gonna cut on one side, flip it over, and cut something on the back? What I'm not gonna be able to do is a rotary tool. We don't have a rotary tool attachment, so um, we could never use this rotary tool for our uh, ShopBot machine specifically. It's really key to note, and you see already set in here, is that the x-axis on our CNC machine is 96 inches or 8 feet long, and that our y-axis is 48 inches or 4 feet long. If you flipped these, uh, you would be cutting in a vertical orientation and therefore basically ruin your project and um, potentially harm the machine a little bit. So we want to make sure that those are set correctly uh, before moving forward. If your material is any smaller than that, just adjust it to whatever size your material is. Your thickness. This is also really important. Uh, basically, three-quarter inch plywood is never three-quarter inches. So we need to go grab a pair of calipers and measure at a couple of locations and get a sense of, is this plywood closer to 0.7 or 0.75 or what have you. So what I measured today is material that is 0.72 uh, inches in thickness. And I'm working in inches, you could work in millimeters. Next is our zero position. This is another thing that we want to make sure we get set correctly. It is an easy pitfall to fall into. Am I zeroing uh, the shot bot spindle head to the top of my material surface or essentially to the bottom of my material or to the machine bed? I want to work on the material surface and then it can essentially do top down math and work that thickness um, up from the machine bed instead of doing it the other way, other way around. So we're setting that there. Just make sure you have that set there if you're going to use it there. And then my X and Y datum position. This can be set at any of the four corners. But for our shop bot machine, the computer in which you're going to be using is over on the left side. So I always like setting it at the bottom left hand corner, but you could also do the top left hand corner. You could also pick the middle uh, if you had a reason to do so. And then I ignore modeling resolution. I'm only using this software to make cuts and basically give instructions to the shop bot. I'm not trying to do any uh, intricate modeling type of things and therefore I don't need to adjust my model. So click OK and then we're gonna be into this drawing section. I'm just gonna quickly draw a rectangle and then focus on cutting that rectangle out with the toolpath. So apply that, close this, and now I have my rectangle cut out on this big four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. I'm going to select this as this is the path that I want to cut through. Uh, you always want to select whatever uh, lines that you actually want to cut and then come over to toolpath and click however you want to cut it. We obviously have a lot of options, but for today I'm just going to do a profile pass that's going to cut all the way through and you're going to see that right here. When we open up our 2D profile path, we basically have this whole list of options here. The first thing is our cutting depth. Um, and within that, start depth. We want our start depth to be zero. We are starting from the top of our material and we don't have any other reason than to have our Z height be set right to the top of our material. So leave that start depth at zero. And then our cut depth. What is our cut depth going to be? For our cut depth, for our machine specifically with a spoil board on it, we want to add 0.03 inches to whatever our depth is. We do not want to set our, our cut depth to be exactly the same uh, thickness as our material as you're basically going to have a little bit of tear out on the bottom and it won't be a pretty cut. So we want to go 0.03 inches like you see here. Not point, not any more because then we'll cut too far down on our spoil board and not any less because we might not cut all the way through. And then what tool are you going to use? Come into the selection and you have a whole bunch of two tools you can choose from. Uh, for today, I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. You can see that looks right like that. Um, my diameter, quarter of an inch. I don't want to adjust my diameter. 
Pass depth, I can adjust my pass depth. Basically the difference in a pass depth and a cut depth is cutting. A cut depth is cutting all the way through my material. A pass depth is how many passes it's gonna take to get to my final cut depth. So we can leave that there. I have the option to override that later if I want to. Step over, this is not something that I need for my profile pass. It's something that I would use for a pocket pass. Um, so we can ignore this for right now. And then my feeds and speeds. What to set these at? This is a big one. Uh, this is one of those where I can't just give you, hey, this is where you set it at and just have fun cutting. Uh, every single bit's gonna be different. Every material's gonna be slightly different. So I'll set this for plywood with this quarter inch end mill. Um, other than that, go to your manufacturer, wherever you got the bit from, and they're gonna have some place, um, some settings and things, and it's a great place to start and it's a great resource. So for this, I'm gonna leave my spindle speed at 16,000 RPMs, and I'm gonna leave my feed rate at 2.8 uh, inches per second. We always like to work in this shop at two inches per second to three inches per second, so I'm at that high speed uh, type of range. I know I'm gonna be cutting really great. My plunge rate is how fast the bit plunges down into my material. I'm gonna leave this at 0.5 inches per second. And then I'm gonna click OK. Bring this back up. If I wanted to edit those passes, I could. I could edit and make this more or less. Um, I can adjust the number of passes. I could actually adjust uh, that in actual inches there. You know, you can see three, four, and you can see that adjust um, over here in this section, and you can see all those passes. So I'm gonna leave this at three and call that good. Next is my machine vectors. I can either be outside right, inside left, or on. This is basically the bit is gonna go outside my, my uh, profile pass. Um, it's gonna go on the inside of that line, or it's gonna go directly on and split the line 50-50. Since I want this whole rectangle to be cut out exactly the size I wanted it to be, I'm gonna do outside, outside right. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna cut in a climb direction. Uh, I could cut in conventional, but sometimes it's a little bit better, saves the longevity of the bits, potentially a little cleaner passes too if I stick in climb. I'm going to ignore do separate last passes. I'm just doing a real simple thing. Uh, that's a little bit more of an advanced tool option. If I'm going to cut all the way through my material, I need to add tabs. If you do not add tabs, this rectangle will just be hanging out once you cut through. Uh, it could damage your bit once it's cut all the way through because it will be loose and, and hanging out. I could do a variety of things. It won't be pretty, so we need to add tabs to make sure that it doesn't move or jostle while cutting. Quarter inch by quarter inch are pretty good places to start. Again, this can adjust due to material thickness uh, and, uh, and material hardness and density and a couple things like that. Right now, just because I've checked the box and I have set my length and thickness doesn't mean I've added any tabs. You'd actually see them on the toolpaths. So I'm gonna come into edit tabs and I can either add a constant number, I could add a constant distance, or I could just come around and click on adding a couple tabs on here. Big rule of thumb with tabs is you always need more than one tab. So I'm gonna have four just to make sure it's really good um, and structurally sound as I cut this thing out and it's not going anywhere. And then ramp, leads, order, start at corners. This we start to get a little bit advanced. We start optimizing our tool paths. Um, ramps are one where we talked about the plunge rate where the bit just goes directly into our wood. If we add something like a ramp, you're gonna see you could add basically where it kind of drags into the material and takes a sloping route into your material instead of going straight in. So we can add one distance of two inches. That's perfectly fine. You can either add one or not. Depending on the hardness of material, uh, these become more or less useful. And then save this the right way. Save this as something pretty obvious. So rectangular cutout, rectangular profile pass, something in that vein. So when you bring this uh, to the shop bot, you're gonna know exactly what you're cutting out. And then just click calculate. This warning pops up. This is, a, this is a great warning. It says you're gonna cut through material. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I can check 0 0.72, 0 0.75. I have my plus 0 0.03 inches. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm gonna click okay. Then, I'm gonna, then this is screen that allows me to kind of preview that tool path. I can zoom in, can zoom out. I can see, hey, there are my passes going right there. You can see my tabs. 
located right there where this bit is going to start. And if I just bring this back and click Preview Toolpath, it cut all the way through. I have my tabs. I see blue sky. I know it's a pretty great toolpath. That's toolpathing, guys.